Hello and welcome to today's edition of Frightfully Forgotten's Trash or Treasure. Today we have a Patreon request. Yep. If you want a movie reviewed by us, you can join us on Patreon. The link is below. Stanley Surik wants us to cover 1990's Mirror Mirror. But what are we drinking? Oh. <laughs> Uh, we're drinking near dark, Czech dark lager. Finger licking good. <laughs> yeah. Mirror Mirror was directed by Marina Sargenti. Rainbow Harvest stars in this. Very odd, eclectic name. Sounds like uh, she was named by hippies. Mm -hmm. It's a very hippie name. Karen Black is in this, mm -hmm. and she is kind of horror movie royalty. Yep. She was in Burnt Offerings, which we covered. She's in Trilogy of Terror, and she's in House of a Thousand Corpses. Oh, that's right, yeah. Yvonne DiCarlo is also in this, and she, again, is kind of horror movie royalty. While well, she was Lily Munster in The Munsters. Yeah. She's a fucking icon, a pop culture icon. And she was in American Gothic, a very underrated Canadian movie we covered years ago. <laughs> Many moons ago. And she was also married to like princes and yeah, shit, all like, royalty Yeah, and like shit. back in the day, like holy Christ, she's got quite the story. <laughs> so the movie starts off with a flashback back to the 50s and we hear this old music playing, this 50s music, and there's two women that bust into this room and there's this mirror, there's this giant ornate mirror that's sitting in the room. And it's like making all these noises and, <laughs> yeah, and growling and everything and shaking. And we see the one girl bring a knife down into the chest of the other. Then we get transported into nowadays. The 90s, which is like 30 years ago now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> long fucking time already. Ugh. The house has been sold. We get introduced to one of the women that owns a shop and she's helping to liquidate the assets in the house including this fucking mirror that's sitting in the room. We get introduced to Susan and Megan, and they're a mother-daughter team, and they're kind of just inspecting the house for one final round just to make sure everything is to their liking before they move in. The mother's all smoking in the house, yeah. and is there an ashtray around anywhere? <laughs> Super Beetlejuice scene, like exactly. Beetlejuice, yeah. the, the hoity-toity kind of like posh mother with the goth kid yeah. moving into the new house. I'm like, holy Christ. Yeah, oh yeah, Winona Ryder 2.0. Yeah. She's all dark and disturbed, of course, and she goes upstairs and she sees this mirror that's in the middle of the room. She feels an attraction to it almost, right? Instantly, she doesn't want this mirror to go. Nope, the mirror stays. Megan then goes to school, and of course, with the way she looks, right, instantly she starts getting mocked by all of the fancy hoity-toity kids. Charlene, she's running for school president, and uh, she's got some mighty fine assets in her benefit too, right? <laughs> Yeah, she's kind of running against this girl Nikki, and Nikki befriends Megan, bond over all the school politics yeah. bullshit that's going and on. Hatred for Charlene. Yeah. Megan has the door closed to her room with this mirror in it, and one of the dogs starts barking at the room, and all of a sudden the door opens, and the dog gets let in, and you hear this big yell. Megan comes home to the dog just on the cutting board in the kitchen, like dead with all his blood all over the cutting board. Like, like the mother's all distraught and oh, oh, she's like, can't you get rid of this thing? Can't you put it somewhere else besides <laughs> yeah. on the cutting board? Does it bother you? Yes. Like, yes, it bothers me. <laughs> you cut our food on this fucking thing. So Megan starts to get closer and closer with this presence that's in the mirror, right? She starts to get more and more attracted to it. Touching it. And yeah, and getting all weird. And one night she has this weird dream with her dead father that appears from the mirror and he kind of gets closer to her and he's like, why are you torturing me like this? And he's all ripping out his own hair and he's all melting and everything and it gets pretty fucking crazy. So she wakes up and that's just all a dream, but it's still enough to kind of freak her out and know that something weird is happening. She goes to school and all these kids are bugging her all the time, you know, tormenting her when she's eating in the cafeteria at lunch and she kind of goes in this bit of a trance. And then 
Your nose starts bleeding and everything. It's like, whoa, yeah. obviously there's something happening here. And the mirror is bleeding at the same time. Yeah. One of the teachers, Ned from Groundhog Day, <laughs> <laughs> giving Megan a bit of a hard time in class, stares him down. And he has this crazy, like, asthma attack in class. Ooh, ooh, yeah, he all takes that buffer yeah. thing, too. He'll take him out in some stretcher. <laughs> <laughs> he's all laid out. <laughs> she has these powers that she's harnessing from this mirror. Because Charlene is running for class president, Megan and Nikki kind of have it out for her, right? Megan kind of starts seducing Charlene's boyfriend, takes him back to her place, and they're actually getting pretty serious. They're yeah. getting like, she's about to like do <laughs> yeah. something there. And he's like, oh no, 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 this is all wrong, this is all wrong. And he kind of gets close to that mirror. These arms come out of the mirror and like start tearing his face all <laughs> off and <laughs> shred the shit out of him. Pulling him into the mirror and he's kind of fighting, he dies. And then he just kind of like disappears. So because Evelyn, has taken all the stuff from the house and is gonna sell it at her antique shop or whatever. She's reading all the journals. She starts reading about this mirror and that it's like possessed by a demonic force. And the only way to stop it is to like drape this black cloth over it. Cancels out the powers and all that. So she decides to go to the house and try to stop this mirror. And that's where we're gonna end the plot. So if you wanna know what happens in Mirror Mirror, keep watching but is it trash or treasure well that'll bring us to the treasure part of this and one of the biggest treasures of it is the characters right they're pretty well defined they're pretty well rounded and the movie takes its time to flesh everything out right yeah and you kind of ride along with the characters as it's going and they're all pretty memorable characters too like yeah. you know i've only seen the movie the one time and i could remember all the characters exactly Know what they look like, what their traits are. Good characters. Yvonne DiCarlo's great. Karen Black is great as like the weird neurotic posh mom. Rainbow Harvest is good as Megan, the goth recluse. It's casted really well. That's right, yeah. And I think the fact that it takes place mostly within the high school realm, it's relatable too, right? Because Obviously, those characters really do exist in real life. Yeah, we've all you know? been through high school. I can relate to Megan's character. I was a little goth kid in school, <laughs> so I know exactly what she was going through. I didn't have any powers that was given to me by a mirror, but I know the torment she went <laughs> I think everybody wants those pa kinds of powers, yep. though, right? At yep. some point in their life, especially school, it's a tough time. And then somebody's making fun of you and you can't really do anything about it. You'd love to have those powers to just, it's like, yep. you know what, fuck you, this is what you get. Yeah. You, you're getting your comeuppance. And it's funny too, like, you look at high school, like, you look back at high school and something as stupid and trivial as class president. In the grand scheme of things, that's, it doesn't matter at all. <laughs> but in high school, that meant everything. That was your whole existence, yeah. was running for class president. But in the grand scheme of your life, that's a blip on the fucking yeah. radar, right? And in the grand scheme of the school, it's yeah. nothing to- you yeah. don't have the power to do yeah. anything. But I like how it kind of goes into that. How yeah. Like, for a kid, that's everything. That's, that's right. your whole existence at that moment in time. And Megan's character arc is really good in this too. That's a really good piece of treasure, how she's like, starts here, and don't want to wreck it, but then she ends up here. She may be a dark looking person to look at, but really she isn't, but she becomes that in the end. It almost seems like the mirror is a metaphor for something, for her transformative time. The mirror kind of mirrors that. Yeah, exactly. Almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The effects for this movie, for what they are, are actually pretty good. The demon hands, I like the yeah. demon hands coming out of the mirror. The mirror bleeding, there's a great scene where the mirror's bleeding and Megan's like kind of getting sexual with it a yeah. bit. Yeah. It's a cool scene, it's like something out of a 90s music video, right? <laughs> yeah. The effects of course go hand in hand with the kills, right? And the kills are really good in this movie too. Like when that girl gets all steamed up, like in yeah, the, the, the showers. showers. It's a neat scene because it's all steam. You hear her screaming and, and you know what's happening without really seeing it. And then when you see the aftermath and she's peeling skin, and it's like, oh man. Yeah. 
Still see his steam? Yeah. <laughs> Larry David. Ron's death in the tub is really good too. And it's really actually fucking creepy because there's that double and that's what lures Ron into the bathroom and then she uses that to drown Ron in the tub. As she's drowning him, she's tearing his face all yeah, off too. Yeah, so like his throat and everything. So his skin is coming off and the, the water's getting more and more red from the blood. Like it's a really neat scene. Yeah, yeah. yeah. classic. Garburator <laughs> scene where Karen Black goes to go put her hands in the garburator and it yeah. turns on and of course there's a false mm -hmm. a false one first where nothing happens and then it happens. You have to have the false one yeah, first. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's classic. And as cookie cutter as that scene is, it still works. And the ending of this movie is really interesting too, and I think it's a piece of treasure because they they trick you. Yeah. They make you think that they're gonna cop out on the ending, but they don't. Basically, it's a mirror, right? This mirror can grant wishes if it wants to for the right people. And at the end, Nikki's like, I wish things were the way they were before. And you're like, oh man, are they just gonna rewind the whole fucking movie and it's like, none of this ever happened? Like, oh fuck, they're gonna do that. And then, no, it's the opposite. They flip you and it takes her back in time. Yeah. And she is the woman in the beginning, in the 50s, stabbing her sister. So it's like, yeah, things were like they used to, but now you're back in time as a murderer. Yeah. It's a really weird ending. It makes you watch the beginning again. Because mm -hmm. the first thing I did is like, is it really... Them? Is it them yeah. in the beginning? You rewatch the beginning. It's, no, it's not as different actors in the beginning. Yeah. Than the ending. So it's like it does make you kind of rewind it and watch the beginning again. She gets fucked in the end. Yeah, she gets sent back in time and. To not a good situation, yeah, right? Yeah. Which is interesting. Yeah. You think that they're just gonna be like, oh, it never happened. That'll bring us to the trash of this movie. It's far too slow. And we like <laughs> and we like slow burns. Yeah. We're slow burn people. But it has to be done right. And and, and in the right kind of movie. That's right. This isn't a slow burn type of movie, at least it doesn't seem like it should be. You know, you have a haunted mirror, so it's already to the silly side. Yeah. So let's just go full on, yeah. just just go for it. Trying to make a smart movie out of an oddball, silly concept. Yeah, that pretty much sums it up, right? Because yeah. the fact is it's a haunted mirror. It takes this movie down a notch, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's great for the character building, because mm -hmm. they took it slow. It's good for that, but... I remember it's like, well, when, when is something gonna happen? There's no gore, there's no real kills. Like, what's this movie rated? Yeah. Looked it up, it's rated R. I'm like, what the fuck is yeah. happening in this movie where it's rated R? It seems PG-13. And then you get like, just over halfway into the movie, and then you're seeing all the crazy shit. Nudity, yeah. blood, deaths, it's like, okay. Yeah, but it's a little too late where yeah. you kind of started to lose me before that kicks in. Yeah, I was getting bored. Yeah. And I was actually starting to look at the time, which yeah. I, that's the biggest indicator there. Yeah. And I didn't want to do that. When you look at the remaining time. Yeah, and you're like, oh, how much more is there to go here? Yeah. And it's like, um, and then yeah, it starts to ramp up. But yeah, by that point, yeah, it's it's like a real fine line there that they yeah. that they ride because yeah. you can get lost there. It's a weird movie where it's like the first half is PG thirteen, yeah, and the second half is full bore rated R, blood, guts, nudity, sex. It's like, well, yeah. that needs to be spread out a little bit throughout the movie, so so that I know what movie I'm watching earlier on. Yeah, you know? yeah. You need to get gripped in. You know, the story gripped me in and the characters gripped me in, but I needed a bit more and I got it, but it was a little too late. The production value too, I think it really hurt this movie. It felt like an, an extended episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark? Like it felt very like, Made sort for of, TV. Yeah, made for TV slash Canadian. The effects were good and all. Yeah. But, the overall look of the movie was a little... It looked like an episode of Degrassi Junior High, if you know what that means. <laughs> if you do, you know what we're talking about. <laughs> and the music in this movie was a little to be desired. Um, it was okay in parts. Mm -hmm. It kind of worked, but overall, it was very generic. And it just... It was almost too much. Turn off the fucking music! I don't need it at this point. It was, it was a lot of... It was a lot of generic music. So, 
Mirror Mirror, 1990, trash or treasure? For myself, I'm gonna say trash. I don't think I'll ever watch it again. I'm gonna say treasure. As much as I did have a problem with the pacing, and I did, like, like just like you, I looked at the time and everything, when is things gonna yeah. pick up? But I thought the movie was kind of original enough and I liked the characters enough, and I kind of knew what they were going for. Just enough to kind of like, okay, this is a little gem. I hate to be shallow like this, but a hot goth chick in a movie, <laughs> that's gonna that's gonna help the cause a little bit, you know? <laughs> if I would have seen this movie like earlier, like in the 90s, I would have had the biggest crush on Rainbow Harvest, <laughs> man. I would have been like, pictures on the walls and shit. I totally got a craft vibe from this. In the craft, the goth kids, and this the goth kid who gets special powers, that can make bad things happen to the kids who are tormenting them. Yeah. And then even like the showdown at the end with her and her best friend mirrors the craft a lot. I wouldn't be surprised if they were inspired or bored from this movie a little probably. bit. Probably, yeah. yeah, probably. Well, there's a bit of Carrie, but Actually, I didn't feel as much Carrie as Jennifer. Yeah. I felt more Jennifer from this, yeah. actually. And I think maybe this movie borrowed from that. Yeah, right. And there's also Beetlejuice vibe. In yeah, there. of course. Yeah. There's also a Prince of Darkness vibe in there yeah, with, with the, the mirror. mirror the, yeah. the arms coming through the mirror. Like, uh, you yeah. can't help but think of Prince of Darkness when you see a hand coming through a mirror. Like, yeah. come on. Yeah. It definitely rides fine line, I think, between yeah. trash or treasure, but it had just enough for me to tip me over that edge. Yeah, see, and I was the other way, yeah. like, it just is, like, yeah. not and, enough. And it's, uh, a, like, it's probably just enough mm -hmm. to go either way, so. Yeah. Again, split decision. <laughs> yeah. So let us know what you think about Mirror Mirror 1990. I'm sure f for a lot of people it has a bit of a nostalgia thing. Yeah. For us it doesn't. It yeah, it, fresh. it never played on TV, yeah. not that I knew not, of. Not in Kanata. <laughs> Kanata Con. So, let us know what you guys think, and until next time, keep drinking. <laughs>